Um, you didn't have enough feed for livestock, and you had chaotic weather patterns and smaller, less predictable crop yields. To describe exactly sort of what happened, you had at about 1306, 1307, 1308, somewhere in there, it didn't stop raining for like three years solid. It just constantly rained very few days that were clear, and that caused famine. Most villages were one crop failure away from famine. So you had famine, and then in 1315 to 1317, which again, kind of towards the beginning of the transitional period into the Little Ice Age, when the weather was not stable and was going chaotic, you had the Great Famine, which cut 10 to 15% of the population of Europe was lost in that. And the impacts of the Great Famine were stretched on until 1325. The, a population weakened by famine has been shown to be more susceptible to plagues, which the Black Death came in in 1338 to 1347, all the way up to 1375. And the Black Death took another huge percent of the population. It is estimated that France recovered to the population levels it had in the Middle Ages within the last 50 years. That's how bad it was. And that huge population collapse is what broke the back of feudalism. Because now you could go, before it was, I'm not going to work for you. And they'd go, fine, starve. Because there's hundreds of you. If you go down the street, he's got hundreds of them too. Don't need you, you're surplus labor. You're cheap people. Feudalism thrived. Collapse of the population, suddenly labor is very valuable. And now you could go, if I don't work, I'm not going to work for you unless you pay me. And you're going to have to decide whether you want your crops to come in or not. Because he's going to go, because this guy over here is going to pay me. And you had the rise of a more capitalistic society and a shift from feudalism to more of serfdom. Uh, which is the difference being feudalism, you're practically owned and serfdom, you have some rights, limited rights, to the one being able to go somewhere else. And with the rise of sort of the capitalism from the labor coll population collapse, you had, you know, more capitalistic uh, increase in manufacturing. Manufacturing was a result of labor saving devices. Everything that the Renaissance was uh, developed upon was created in the Middle Ages. You know, all the water mills, they had all that stuff in the Middle Ages. Somebody developed it. <coughs> but they had the surplus population. Why spend all the money on a labor-saving device when you got people coming out of your ears? So by the Renaissance, the population had collapsed and you started manufacturing labor-saving devices. You know, you went back and went, oh, well, uh, you know, he developed the water wheel. That saves labor. We need to implement that. So that's pretty much the basic, like, direct impacts of the, the transition from the medieval warm period to the Little Ice Age. You can think about a lot of that stuff as being an adaptation to cold and also the results of what the cold did to the population, the population collapse and everything like that. I have several more pages that get more esoteric in the and the developments, but we don't have time to go into them. Is there any questions? Does anybody have anything? Yes? What would cause the Gulf Stream to not transmit that heat during that time? What would cause the Gulf Stream not to transmit the heat? Mm -hmm. The theory is, is that the as it got warmer in the medieval warm period, the ice caps themselves actually collapsed to some extent and the flush of fresh water into the North Atlantic, which is dense, cold, and salty, that, that sin dense, cold, salty brine sinks, but if you flush a bunch of fresh water, which is less dense, it doesn't want to sink, and you're basically putting the brakes on it. So a partial collapse of the uh, ice caps due to what they theorized was the warmth of the, the medieval warm period. So yes, it could happen today. So the melting of the ice caps could potentially cause the Gulf Stream to cool down, which would cause another little ice age? Correct. Correct. It is one of the possibilities of global warming today. <laughs> yes. Um, 
that is what the theory is one of the theories. It was more felt in Europe than the rest of the world because of the Gulf Stream effect. But the rest of the world did feel effects because, after all, the biggest influence on climate and temperature on this planet is the big fireball in the sky. And when the bigger <coughs> fireball in the sky isn't putting out energy, we get cooler. And when it's putting out excess energy, we get warmer. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.